Okay, uh, good afternoon. We are going to be covering uh, mostly functions, but uh, this was the section, expressions, equations, and functions. These are all related concepts. An expression is a mathematical, um, I don't know, mathematical statement, which doesn't necessarily involve an equal sign. So this is an expression, 3x squared minus 2 plus 4xy. Uh, an equation, as you might notice, the word equal kind of in there. An equation uh, makes two things equal. And a function uh, is a special kind of an equation. A function is an equation, hi, cat, that uh, where one variable can be completely and unambiguously determined uh, by knowledge of the other variable. So uh, over here, there's only one variable, so we call this a function. Uh, but if I go down to d equals rate times time, uh, or d equals r times t, I guess, uh, I could say that distance is a function of rate, or rate is a function of uh, time, or distance is a function of time. Uh, it all depends on what is known. Let's jump in and let's actually see some examples there. Uh, simplifying the expressions, we're not actually going to do here, but really this is just a matter of gathering like terms. This is a matter of factoring the numerator and the denominator and dividing, um, evaluating expressions for specific variables. So I would set x equal to negative 2, write this as in parentheses negative 2, minus 3 times in parentheses negative 1, and go from there. Uh, solve the equations, very, very much the, uh, the main thing you did in Algebra 1, uh, where I would isolate the variable, get it to say x equals something. So we would subtract 15 and get 18, divide by 9, and get that x equals 2. Here we talk about literal equations where uh, you will end up with an expression for r, but not necessarily a value for r. And here's where we get more into functions. So a function is often written this way, which just got highlighted on the screen right there. Highlight on the screen right there. Uh, this would be pronounced d of t equals 20 t. There it is, d of t equals 20 t. And what it's basically saying that the distance, uh, I know that uh, that's what this uh, is meaning, distance as a function of time equals 20 times time. So if you were going 20 miles per hour, you could find your distance if someone just told you the time. If someone said the time was, oh, I bicycled for one hour. You'd say, oh, I went 20 miles, two hours, and I went 40, minutes, uh, 40 miles. Uh, three hours, 60, three and a half, 70, et cetera, et cetera. So if someone tells you the time, you can unambiguously tell you exactly what that distance is. Uh, distance would be called the dependent variable here, uh, meaning it depends on the time. Uh, and time would be the independent variable. You tell me time. I can figure out what the dependent variable is. Honestly, in an equation like this, they're kind of one and the same. If you told me a distance, I could also have told you a time. OK, so just a little bit more of this function notation. Every now and then, I get people who think that this says f times x somehow equals x squared plus 3x minus 1 where the X is really unimportant. It could be a star, it could be a monkey, it could be Cookie Monster for all I care. Uh, basically, we're saying that the way to find F, if you knew what X was, is you would take that value, square it, add it to three times that value, and subtract one. So it doesn't matter whether this is an X, or a Z, or a star, or a Cookie Monster. So over here, where they're asking us to find f of negative seven, I'm just gonna say, oh, okay. Well, I plug in whatever they give me, 
as x here. So two times negative seven, that's negative 14 plus five, that is negative nine. So f of negative seven is nine. It's a slightly different uh, question than this one, where they're asking me for what value does f of x equal 12? So now we're replacing f of x with 12 and saying 12 equals 2x plus 5. I'd subtract 5 from both sides, get 7, divide by 2, and get 7 halves, or 3.5, or 3.5, however you want to say it. Um, this question we will remove from next year. There's just too much stuff going on there. Functions graphically, uh, where the what was a y value in the past will now replace, be replaced with a value of function, so g of x. Uh, what is g of negative 3? If I plugged in negative 3, so that's my x value, what would I get out for a y value? And since this graph appears to contain the point negative 3 comma negative 1, g of negative 3 would be negative 1. The next question asks for what values of x does g of x equal 3. So now they're saying where, what values would make the y value equal to, uh, to positive 3. And the x value would be either negative 1 or it looks like positive 4. Yes, positive 4. OK, on into domain and range. Domain are what values I'm allowed to plug in for x. And the range is what values I might get out for y. So in this particular graph, it only appears like uh, the domain is defined from negative 4 to positive 6. And quite frankly, I can't tell from this graph whether it includes negative 4 and positive 6. So, uh, so that's a little bit ambiguous. Uh, but let me write this in, um, in interval notation. So if we think it does not include uh, negative 4, then we would do this curved parentheses here negative four, and if we thought it did not contain uh, positive six, goes all the way up, but does not contain it, we would write it like that. Let me focus a little bit better. If on the other hand, we thought it contained both of them, we would do from negative four to six, and the extra straight line to me represents the extra straight line in the or equal to symbol. So this is kind of equivalent to saying, um, of this, notice the extra straight line for the or equal to symbol corresponds to the extra straight line, where this would be negative four to six, but non-inclusively. And again, we can't quite tell from that diagram. If they put uh, dots at the end, if they were closed dots, filled in dots, then it would be or equal to. If they were open dots, it would be less than, uh, but with not an equal to but we can't quite tell. Okay, let's walk through a few of these. Uh, determine if y is a function of x. So in part a, if I told you what x was, you could multiply it by 4 and subtract 12 and end up with one possible solution there. So that means that y is a function of x. If you know what x is, we can tell you what y is. Uh, there's absolutely nothing that I couldn't plug in for x. I could multiply negative 1,217 by 4 and subtract 12 from that. Wouldn't want to, but I could. Uh, when I do that, I could get any possible number. I could uh, basically plug in any number for y and figure out the x value, which corresponds. So, so the domain and range are both all reals. So in A, it is a function. The domain is all real numbers, which means everything from negative infinity to positive infinity. But to be clear here, when we talk about infinities, we never include them. So that's always a rounded bracket. Uh, the range is the same thing from negative infinity to infinity. And perhaps you notice that that is just a line, uh, a line which has a kind of normal slope. It goes all the way down, all the way up, all the way to the left, all the way to the right. Okay. In B, on the other hand, uh, 
y is not a function of x. Because if you said that x, for example, equals 9, then y might equal 3, but it could just as easily equal negative 3. And since you can't tell me specifically with certainty, with no ambiguity, what y is, it is not a function. Not a function. Uh, however, we can talk about its domain and range still. The domain is, uh, let's see. So if uh, x equals y squared, and y squared is always a positive number or zero, then x is always going to be a positive number or zero. So I will say it starts at and includes zero. It goes up to infinity, but doesn't include infinity. Y, on the other hand, could be absolutely anything. So it can go from negative infinity to infinity. Okay. Uh, in C, uh, that is a function. If you tell me what X is, I can tell you specifically what Y is. Uh, however, if I were to plug in one, I would get a two. If I were to plug in negative three, negative three plus one is negative two. Absolute value of negative two is also two. You get the same thing. That's okay. It's a special kind of function, but it's still a function. Uh, the domain. There's nothing I can't take the absolute value of, nothing I can't add one to. It seems like it is all reals to me. Uh, but the range, if I plug in a negative one, I get zero. Absolute value of zero is zero. But that's the lowest possible absolute value. Now, it does exist. I can do that. And I can do anything above that. You want 72? Great. Plug in 71. Uh, and in part D, uh, I'm not allowed to divide by zero. That's one of the big no-nos. Uh, however, assuming that I'm not dividing by zero, whatever number I plug in for X, I would get one specific value for Y. So again, we have a function here. Uh, my domain is all real numbers except for one. I'm going to write that as all the numbers from negative infinity up to, but not including one. And that's the technically a union symbol, mean and in this case, everything from one, but not including one, up into infinity. The range is way harder to figure out here. Uh, we will learn a method, or method in the future. Uh, but for now, just realize that five divided by anything can't equal zero. So I'm going to say it's anything aside from zero. So look at a fair amount of what we have going on up there. Mm, zero to infinity. Here it's not equal to one. There it's not equal to zero. Okay, the next couple, uh, don't ask whether or not it's a function, but do ask you to determine the domain and range. Uh, I am just going to tell you for A, you can plug in anything aside from one. So same domain that it had for part uh, D in the last question. Uh, and the range is exactly seven. It is just that one number seven. You could write it as, as Seven, from seven to seven, including seven. Um, because regardless of what you plug in, assuming it's not one, because zero over zero is kind of special, uh, whatever you plug in is going to cancel out. 92 minus one over 92 minus one cancels out, and you're just left with that seven. Uh, the other big example, the other thing that I want to show you was on part B down here, part B. Uh, that you're not allowed to take the square root of a negative number. So for part B, the domain, you may take the square root of zero. So it's going to, I don't know why I'm drawing square root. Uh, so it's going to start at and include two and go up into infinity. So if I plug in two, two minus two is zero. Square root of zero is zero. That is the lowest thing I'm going to get out. So that starts at zero. 
and it goes up as high as you want. You want it uh, to get to 100, great. Plug in whatever 100 uh, squared plus two is. Uh, and so this goes up as high as you want it to go. You never, of course, reach infinity. Okay, uh, let me know if you have more questions. Let's stop it there. Mm -hmm.